Easter Bunny costume holding my child's hand, approaching a black car. I screamed at the top of my lungs at him to get away from my son, and I screamed Michael's name. They both turned to Hello everyone, Dylan here. So today we'll be reacting to another one of Mr. Nightmare's videos, and it's called Three Disturbing True Parent Horror Stories by Mr. Nightmare. So this actually came out April 24th. 21 so so yeah you some this energy for indie projects including animation with the permission to send a lesson I'm not re-uploading I'm actually commentary commentating and reacting to them other people do that too um anyways go subscribe to uh, Mr. Nightmare, like we did, and like the video. Sometimes there's a glitch. Sometimes it doesn't show on my liked videos when I just like like it right away. So subscribe to Mr. Nightmare with notifications on. And I am not monetizing this video, by the way. So, yeah. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe. And I will, and I will give you a shout out once you do all those things, and you must stay active. Anyways, let's start. <laughs> Parents parenting. Hmm. I'm a single mother of two. My ex-husband and I take turns watching the kids month to month. My son Luke is 15 and my daughter Melissa is 10. This happened just a few months ago. I did some late night grocery shopping after work. Luke had texted me earlier that he was going out with his friends. It was a Friday night. I wasn't thrilled with him leaving Melissa alone, but 10 is the age a lot of parents are more comfortable leaving their kids alone, and he knows I can't expect him to babysit her anymore. I got back to the house around 9 o'clock at night. I had to make 3 or 4 trips from the car to the house because of the amount of groceries I bought. I always overdo it with the groceries on the months I get to watch the kids. And then on the months alone, I'm the complete opposite. When I finally finished putting all the groceries in the fridge and pantry, I went upstairs to greet Melissa. I heard the shower running in the bathroom, so I went back downstairs to lay down in the living room and put on my show on Netflix. I was halfway through an episode, and I still hadn't heard Melissa leave the bathroom upstairs. Long hot showers aren't free, and I never condone my kids wasting water. I went up there to knock on the door and tell her to get out of the shower soon. I went back downstairs to resume my show. Only for about five minutes, though, Melissa was still in the shower, so I went back up there again and knocked louder. This time I waited for her to How acknowledge would you me. know when she didn't I can How would you know if it's even Melissa exactly Oh god these stories they angrily. get me It took me a little bit to notice through the bottom crack of the door that the light was off in the bathroom I tried the doorknob but the door was locked The locks on my doors inside the house are easily unlocked with a fingernail though so I had to force my way in now growing concerned As the door opened I yelled into the room at my daughter that moment feeling more furious than anything. I flicked the light switch up and went over to the tub. I yanked the curtain half open, honestly not knowing what to expect, but not in my worst nightmare would I have expected to find some 50-something year old withered looking woman laying flat in the bathtub with a shower spraying water onto her. I screamed so loud and long until I lost the ability to scream for a few seconds. I had my back pressed up to the mirror. Everything on the counter had fallen to the ground felt an unexplainable sense of shock and horror. The woman stood up in the tub looking at me, her hair and clothes obviously drenched. I slammed the bathroom door shut and screamed Melissa's name. But why would uh, that woman just like... That's kind of weird though, dude. A 50 year old woman in the shower, like sitting down 
in the tub with the water spraying onto her hair and clothes. Everything's drenched. That that's weird. Her room first thing. I found her hiding under the covers. I grabbed her and tugged her out of the room. She passed the bathroom door towards the stairs. That woman was standing in the doorway of the bathroom. Everything about her looks like a zombie. Her eyes, her movement. I made sure to grab my cell phone before locking the two of us in the spare room in the basement. I called the police. As I waited for the police to come, Melissa told me she thought it was me who came into the house. And when she saw some random, scary looking woman walking up the stairs, she ran to her room to hide. We left the front door unlocked when he left. The police showed up in a timely manner. I talked to the police and told them exactly what Melissa told me. Described the woman's appearance. I think she was also soaked, and because of that, I couldn't give a good description of her hair besides long and gray. This was all after making sure the woman was no longer in the house. Not under a bed, not in the closet, not under the shower curtain. She simply left the house as easily as she entered. It's likely she was drugged out of her mind. I'd never seen someone who looked like they were literally lacking consciousness, yet still walking. I don't even know if I would have been able to press any charges on her if she was found. She wasn't. Don't you worry, I properly scolded and reprimanded you. Always remember to lock your doors. Hey everyone, welcome to Florida. God we are damn. Kind of doctor's office of doing primary care differently. Our best in class doctors are here to. Especially a weird crazy looking woman you this don't know what they ago. could do to you we once went to this family resort in new york state mm. we took our two kids who were four and six at the time this focuses on our six-year-old michael jr but why we i don't understand why would you so like a bunch of fun little festivities set i don't understand like why would you leave your like let your son or something hang out with his friends while this girl is alone. Wait, did she say that she was like 10 or something? The hell? I I was able to stay home alone since I was like 13 or something. So I did while we were in the dining time. one evening. Easter Bunny was walking around giving kids high fives. When he came over to our table, four-year-old Peter hid under the table crying. But Michael Jr. gave him the high five and wasn't afraid at all. The guy in the bunny suit walked away quickly, probably to get our son to stop crying. The next day, there was an Easter egg hunt, which was in one of the fields by the kids' center of the resort. I watched the kids scrambling to collect eggs while my husband Mike was elsewhere. That a bunny costume or a new one in the costume just like freaks me out too. I don't get that little kid. It's creepy. Not really sure what he was doing. The Easter Bunny guy was walking around the field interacting with the kids. I noticed he knew to avoid Peter. Peter came running to me when the Easter Bunny got near to him. He would do the same thing with Santa around the holidays. The guy in the bunny suit was interacting with Michael a lot. I found it kind of cute. I just didn't want Peter around him so that he wouldn't start crying again. So I brought him to the other side of the play area for a little while. When it looked like the Easter Bunny was gone, I walked him back to where Michael Jr. was last, and I couldn't see him. I started calling his name, and another parent came up to me and asked if I was looking for a boy wearing a red sweater. I said yes, and she told me the guy in the Easter Bunny costume walked him out of the field area in the direction of the parking lots. She told me this in a slightly concerned sounding tone. I picked up Peter and ran in the direction that the woman pointed. I went faster than I ever could, while holding my son on top of it. Motherly instincts clearly kicking in, giving me an adrenaline boost. I saw the man in the Easter Bunny costume holding my child's hand, approaching a black car. I screamed at the top of my lungs at him to get away from my son, and I screamed Michael's name. They both turned to look at us, and the man let go of my son's hand. Michael ran over to me, not realizing at all the danger he was just in. Okay, that that the costume set to me that is lost, that's freaky. That is freaky. You don't know um, the the person in front of the ma like in the mask if they're um, if they work if they work at the place or they just like someone ran on that. Lost, but that was totally. That's yeah. 
was about to get That's into the car. That's weird. Said, it, this has to be the worst story he tried ever. He mask off of him. He shoved me and yelled at me to piss off. Then he got in his car and drove away. I tried to remember his plate number, but he was gone too quickly. I called my husband on my old archaic cell phone, and I brought my kids to the front desk of the resort to meet him there. They said the man in the Easter Bunny costume didn't work there. I was livid, yelling at the front desk workers the whole time, who were apparently aware of the man, yet didn't stop him or question him. We threatened to sue the entire place. They ended up refunding us for our entire stay, which we gladly accepted. But I was mere seconds away from losing my kid forever. We adopted our son Charlie at the age of two. He's aware that he was adopted. We were honest with him about that ever since he started to learn to speak. He's now seven years old. We don't have any children of our own because my wife can't have kids. Somewhat recently, my wife and I started noticing very strange behavior with Charlie. And what motivated me to actually sit down and write this was something my wife and I still can't explain. Autism. There's an upstairs toy room for Charlie since there's I, I had pretty weird behavior when I was um, that that age. The whole room has a bunch of toys like a Lego table, action figures and such. For the duration of about a month, at different times we'd hear Charlie talking to himself. Not like role playing talking in his play. You'd overhear him speaking as if you were talking to another person in the room. The first time this happened, my wife wasn't home. As I passed his playroom, I overheard him talking as if he had a friend in there. I swear to God, I actually walked in just to make sure he didn't actually have a friend in there. When I walked in, I saw him sitting at his Lego table with a couple of his WWE action figures on top of it. But he wasn't currently playing with any of them. He was just sitting there, blankly staring at me. I asked, who are you talking to? He shrugged his shoulders. As weird as it was, I had to assume he was just playing. The next time something strange happened, Probably. it was a lot worse. This time, my wife was at least home to witness it with me. We were in the kitchen, Charlie was in the backyard playing. We heard him laughing and talking suddenly, so my wife went to look out the window to see what he was doing, and she called me over to look as well. What we saw was Charlie talking to thin air, as if he were talking to a person. It resembled him trying to show someone who wasn't there how to use the plastic sword in his hand. I expressed to my wife my concern. She said he may just have an imaginary friend. I told her I didn't know how I felt about that. He seemed to feel it was completely normal. Fast forward to like the third or fourth instance. It was I, nine o'clock on the school. Have that approaching Charlie when I was bedtime. younger. He was in his playroom still. I was trying to be lenient with the bedtime and let him play for a few more minutes. I heard Charlie laughing and talking to his imaginary friend again. Imaginary he had to friend. Take a peek into the room. As I opened Charlie's door, I heard his closet door shut. I looked at Charlie standing up in the dead center of the room his toys scattered around him. I asked him who's in the closet. And something on the inside of it fell. It sounded like a big plastic toy. I asked one more time who's in the closet and he yelled. He said George. I swung the door open, expecting one of his little friends in there. Maybe my wife I let him have a play date or sleepover without telling me. But the closet was empty besides I don't know, I have not watched all the it movies, so brought him to his room. I shouldn't even I told him he was going to bed. I don't even know anything about that. And I told my wife that. about the closet door closing on its own, and then the toy inside falling on its own. She thought I was messing with her at first, but then she saw I was serious. That night, I woke up to sounds from down the hall in Charlie's playroom. We sleep with the door open. I woke my wife and told her to follow me quietly. We tiptoed to the toy room. Charlie wasn't in there, but a distinct, loud clicking sound was coming from inside the toy closet. I opened it, showing bravery for my wife. And as I did, the clicking stopped. We dug for any kind of electric toys that may have made that clicking sound. Nothing, though. I think that was the night I became a believer in the paranormal. The next morning, I woke to my wife's scream. She was holding our wedding photo. It was cracked right down the middle, not just the picture in the glass, but the frame, too. It was cracked perfectly down the middle, separating the two of us. We took Charlie and stayed with my mom for a week. Then, after a week, my wife and I returned to the house. We listed the house for sale, and after a few days of normalcy, we brought Charlie back to the house. But we moved out a month later. Oh my god.
Mr. Nightmare gets me every single time, bro. It's crazy. So the video, the story where it's where um where um that a guy dressed up in a bunny suit that was crazy and mad creepy, bro. Alright, anyways guys, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe, turn on notifications. So you guys will stay tuned on every video. Stay active, like, comment, and subscribe. And stay active in order to get a shout out. So other than that, thank you guys so much for watching. And I will see you guys in the next video. Oh wait, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make videos all day tomorrow because I'm staying home alone. So... There might be... I'm going to work on videos. So, yeah. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. And I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye, everyone.